Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto at ToolsandTime.com. Welcome back, guys. Behind me, you see this 2008 Kia Sportage. It's got the 2.0. It's the LX model. It's a manual. And we're going to be replacing the timing belt. Now, the owner opted out of replacing the water pump and the pulleys and the seals. So he's just going strictly with the timing belt replacement unless we see something critical when we're in there. I can show you the steps and point you through the replacement of all the other stuff while you're in there, which is highly recommended. Without further ado, guys, I hope you enjoy. Let's do it to it. Yeah. All right, so first thing first, I'm gonna take and remove all the accessory belts, power steering, alternator, AC. I'm gonna take and loosen that up. There's also one right underneath the lower, lower side of the power steering pump. Next we'll take and loosen up the alternator so we can remove that belt. If you look down low you'll see that tensioner. You'll see the back side. Uh, that may be a 12 as far as the tensioner bolt. We're going to take and loosen up the slack bolt first before we loosen up the back bolt. Okay the back side bolt is a 12 millimeter as well. Okay, so now if we come down to the lower back side of the alternator, you'll see there's a 12 millimeter retaining bolt. We're just gonna loosen that nut up. That nut's loose and the tensioner's loose. I should be able to pull on this belt. I'll take it, I should have loosened the top up a little bit more, but that's all right. All right, next we're gonna take and loosen up the AC belt. Uh, we're gonna take and loosen this bolt on the front of the pulley first, the tensioner. The 14 millimeter. I'm gonna loosen that one up as much as possible without it coming apart on us. Oh yeah, how about it? Yes. Okay, next we're gonna take a 17 millimeter on the impact gun. We're gonna zip these bolts off of this top mount. However, we would like to take and place a, a block of wood and a jack underneath the oil pan for a moment just to keep the pressure off while we loosen these up. Okay, we got the jack placed under the oil pan with a block of wood. Very important. And you don't want to go jacking the car up from the oil pan. You just want to slightly put pressure on that oil pan. It's only aluminum, guys. Be careful. Okay. I didn't think I... Oh, you know what? I got to pull that. Power steering pump back. And that'll raise that line up for us a little bit. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna take and zip this 10 millimeter off of there. This allows it to be moved around much freer. Pull that little tab right there. That'll allow you to move that bracket for the time being. We can reinstall that later, but it makes life a little bit easier. What I'm gonna do to give myself a little bit more room is not necessary, but I'm gonna remove this mount completely. All right, 14 millimeters. Should be able to take this mount off and get it out of the way. That opens it up nicely, doesn't it? Can you see that? I believe it's a 14 bolt right here. Alright, let me take this little bracket off. Like so. Woo! Almost got there. We can start taking the, the water pump pulley off. Now you could have waited and left the belts on it for now to help hold that in place, matter of preference. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take and remove this upper timing cover. One, two, three, uh, maybe four. There might be a dowel pin on it. 
That'll give us a window into timing belt. This one has never been replaced. I'm familiar with this vehicle. I know the owner well. He's owned it since it was new. For those four water pump pulley bolts right here. It's easiest to leave the belt on than break them loose. They come loose relatively easy. However, if you skip that step like I did, I was able to take a, a pry bar like so, put it between two of the bolts, and then break it, break the two loose, spin it, break the two loose. However, there's a few different ways you could do this, especially on this model. If you make yourself a wedge out of a block of wood, or if you have a door wedge or something, you put it right in here. Or if you have yourself a max set of screwdrivers now, this is another uh, situation where a snap-on will not work and a craftsman just gets stuck. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> but you can put it in there and it works like a wedge and it'll allow you to break them loose because it'll be trying to pull that screwdriver through that pulley. However, I didn't have to do that. I just simply used the um, bolts because I didn't want to put any extra pressure on this because we are not replacing the water pump. I would rather be safe than sorry, even though it takes very little pressure to break them bolts loose. Now I'm just going to sit down here and uh, twiddle my fingers and get these, get these bolts <laughs> off. One pulley. And there's one more pulley behind that pulley. And there's a little hole there. We're going to now align the timing marks and then remove the harmonic balancer from down below. If you take a look up here, you'll see this hole, and then you'll see it says up on that sprocket. That's it. I know you guys see me do one of these 2.0s already. However, I figured, you know what? Every make, every model, they, they cram them in there a little bit different. Very similar to that Toyota we did last, and exactly like the, um, Hyundai that we did, the 2009 Hyundai. Okay, so you're gonna find yourself a socket that fits. I'm actually using a 7 8 I know that's not right, but it fits it really good. And that's what I have to get me out far enough. It worked out perfect. So I'll be using a 7 8 socket, half inch drive ratchet, and we are gonna turn this in a clockwise rotation until our timing marks line up. We're gonna also look for the timing mark on the balancer. But Tammy, I want you to tell me when this starts getting close to like about around here to where this one's at okay. and then I'll start slowing down from there. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. Now if you come over here, you see that notch in there with the red mark on it? Can you see it? Yep. Well that's what that, um, that hole will line up with. Okay? So I need you to tell me when we're getting close to that. Now we might be 180 out. I might have to turn this one more revolution. It's a 50-50 shot. Now don't let me pass it. Another thing you're gonna look at, is you'll see once I get close, this line right here should line up with this wedge almost. This has to go a little bit more before it's center of that, that hole. From the angle you stand, it could be deceiving. That's why we have the other three reference marks to go with it. Down on the harmonic balancer, you'll see that white mark coming up right before the, the 10. That should be pretty close to T, I believe. We're going to go a little bit more. I think we're right on the money. It's almost impossible for me to get you. And I hope you can see it. The red mark. As you see me do in the past. I like to give me a mark that isn't so hard to see. But in addition to that, now we have four marks to go off of. You go down to a harmonic balancer now. And hopefully we can see that T and that white mark. 
That's now lined up as well. Okay, if you let it off to jack, raise it up slow. There's another shot. Okay, now we're gonna take and remove the harmonic balancer. Try not to turn it. Like so. These ones usually come off pretty well, I must admit. Uh, I didn't spray anything on it yet. Oh, there she goes. Not bad. And there's this cup style washer. They, they actually call it like a flange, but you see what we got there. Okay, now at this point we're going to take and remove this lower cover. One bolt here, another one here. There's one more up top. I don't know, I think there's four. Let's zip them out, 10 millimeter. I think there's one more up above the water pump. I want to let it down and get that one from up top. Okay, so you can get it out like that. However, to make it easier, remove this one bracket as two bolts. You'll see in my previous video that I removed them too. All right, as you've seen, I was able to, once the motor was jacked up a little bit, manipulate it out a little easier. However, make life easier for yourself and remove them two bolts on that bracket. All right, we're down to it. All right, if you take a look, you have this white mark here. You follow it in, you'll see it's lined up with that line on the back cover. That's your lower time mark. Okay, right down here we have the tensioner, right? And we have that retaining bolt, I think it's a 12 millimeter. And then we have that Allen uh, hole right there where we'll use an Allen wrench. Well, before we remove that, maybe it's good to look at to see where the tension's actually still at on this belt. You see that notch? And then it has that little white lever that has the arrow point on it. It's almost in between that notch. You see how it just spun out of the way? The tension just went off of that belt. It's easier just to take and remove this tensioner all the way because we're going to want to inspect it. Anyhow, here's that that arrow that I was showing you that needs to be in that window like so. And this gives you a direction that it wants you to turn it. And once it's in place, it, it'll act like a cam. Okay, the Baron actually feels, feels good. The pulley, well, it's got 80,000 miles on it. I'd be replacing it. Okay, at that point, we could take and slide the time belt off of the cam sprocket, pull it up through the top, like so. Let's take a peek at this time belt. You still see it has the original Kia gates well we're going to take into a visual inspection like I said the customer opted out of replacing the seals and the idlers and the water pump and it adds a couple couple more dollars to the job but it's not much especially since you're in here and the parts are relatively cheap um, like as far as the idlers and everything it would be no extra cost because I'm there I got them off but the parts would have been just a little bit more money not bad though so I recommend I highly recommend at least replacing the tensioner and the idler and if you have the extra time pull that cam sprocket off and replace that seal the crank the harmonic balancer is already off pull the um, I'll give you a shot of it. Just slide it off and replace that seal as well. And everything's done. And then if you choose not to do the water pump at that point, okay. But in order to do that water pump, you gotta um, remove this, this timing belt. It's not ran off the timing belt though. So if the 
water pump goes bad, it's not going to destroy the time belt, but it could contaminate it with antifreeze because it's so close. It really feels good, it sounds good. There's no play in it. However, it's one bolt. You know, one bolt, that thing is off. Like I said, I wouldn't charge any extra for replacing this at that point. But the customer bought his own parts. We could remove this sprocket and inspect that seal a little better. But I don't have parts anyway. You didn't get a Gates belt either, which I would recommend OEM use Gates. Uh, if you noticed on the last Hyundai I did with the 2.0, I used a Gates belt. Like I mentioned before, the owner purchased his own parts, just the Continental. But it does have 113 teeth. I counted them. Actually, Tammy helped me count them. So, remember just like before, you want to keep all your slack on that side, on the tensioner side. So this side you want to keep tight. Um, if you have one of them little clips to hold this in place, they work great. Can you hold your hand down on that? Maybe I'm going to just put it on a sprocket down below. Pull all the slack out as far as I can. It should line up as long as the time marks are good. As long as you didn't move anything. That's going to put us right where we were. Okay, if you want to come down here, I can show you. I've got a drop somewhere. Right here. See it up there? So we went around the idler, around the crank. Our timing mark is still lined up if you look up top here. Yep, right there. Everything is still good. Time mark is still lined up. If you look up top here, everything is still good. So at this point, we're going to take and put the tensioner on. What you getting over there? I placed a little bit of blue Loctite onto uh, the threads. I got a counter pin uh, holding that tensioner. This is how you'll take it off, but they get it back on. I got that yellow paint everywhere. You're gonna compress it like so. I put something there to hold it. We'll be using this counter pin. Now we're going to get it down in place. It's going to be tricky because of the, the way this is made up. It can be very difficult. But you got like that freeze out plug down there. And then you got the tabs pretty much inside that. Alright. We're going to take and put this like snug down with your fingers. At this point, we're going to take and pull our pin. It's going to be very hard to see it, but we're going to use a 6 millimeter Allen wrench. We're going to place it in here, and we're going to turn it in the direction of that arrow. And while we're doing this, we're putting tension on that belt, and we're going to want to line up the, the arrow with the window that we were, I was showing you earlier. And now we have that in the window. I'm going to take and try to lock this in place. All right, hopefully, you can see it back there. I'm in the window, a little on the tight side. Towards the bottom will be tighter than up to, at the top. And we're locked in place there. If you look through that hole, it would be right on. Plus, if you look at our mark that we made earlier, that's right on. Okay, and you can see here the crank time mark is still lined up. The threads aren't very long. Yeah. So it is that'll work perfect, actually. This is the way it is. And now we're gonna take and uh turn that crank to revolutions clockwise. One quick note here, while you're turning this, you're going to feel the compression, especially if you leave the spark plugs in. To make it easier, remove the spark plugs and it will turn over much easier. 
if you feel any binding like mechanical stop like don't move any further because once you feel a bind or something interfering that means you have something off this is an interference engine and you can cause internal damage if this crank or cam is turned at any time without the timing belt installed in the correct timing so please be careful Bam. I should have all the tension onto this side of the time belt. Now we're going to go up there and we're going to we're going to check everything up top. I know the mirror is a little dusty, but you can see it. It's right in that window. All the time marks are lining up. Okay, so now I'm going to go down on the crank to make sure this time belt is adjusted correctly. And I'm not certain if I covered this step in the previous time belt job. However, I'll show you here. The way we did it is just fine. However, we want to go equivalent to two teeth uh, clockwise. I'm going to turn on the crank. So Tammy, can you tell me when when we pass the first cog? So this yellow mark is going to go clockwise. That one's going to pass. Tell me when it gets to the next one. Okay? Yeah. With the yellow line. Yes. One. Two. I'm going to see if I'm still in that window. If not, we're going to make the final adjustment to that tension. And you see it? We're still right on the money inside that window. I'm happy with that. That's where she's staying. 39 foot pounds. Now the time belt's on, it's a couple teeth turned. Tensioner is in the window. Everything is set to spec. It's time to put the lower cover on. Clean all the dust out, make sure the seal's in good shape. And we'll, we'll reinstall that. I don't know if you guys really need to see me do the rest of this. However, like I mentioned before, it's great having you along and it's, it's kind of boring without you. So I'm gonna pop everything back together in the reverse. I'm gonna take you in and out as I go along and see where we take it from there. I just want to cover this little step. When we take this bolt, out of the crank, it's probably best to use an impact gun or something that's going to whip it off really fast because you don't want to go turning the, the crank in a counterclockwise rotation. So an impact gun works good for that. Like I said, with that one bracket up top, it's going to make it a little difficult. Okay, so I got the cover up. All four bolts are tight. The fifth one up top is um, a little difficult to get to from down below. So we don't want to go this way, of course. So I'm going to put this washer flange, whatever they call it, back on there like so. All right, next comes the balancer. This usually goes on pretty well. You feel the key and the bolt. Okay, now for the top cover, do everything once over again. Everything should slide together nicely. Same way we took it apart. If anything doesn't, back up. Tighten them down, factory spec. Only plastic, guys. The only tighten up so far because if you've seen them bolts, they had a shoulder on them. They're going to go until they bottom out. And if you keep on forcing it, all you're doing is messing things up. So, next, I guess I'll put the pulleys on. There's a pin on that water pump. I'm not sure if you can see it from there, but it's right there. Once I get this in there, I got a question for you guys. I want to get this started. Now I'll start fingering it while we talk. Finger first, then have conversation. <laughs> Bear with me for a moment. Oh, we got it. 
Once you get one in there, you're good. So tell me guys, what do you think about this fight coming up? Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather. I gotta tell you, I've always been a huge fan of Conor. He's very inspiring. Some may call it cocky. And um, but sometimes self-confidence can come across as cocky. Sure, he has a way of saying things sometimes to promote himself, no doubt. But he has a lot of belief in himself, and I, I find that very inspiring. To be honest with you, there's times when, when I challenge myself and I look up to people to give me confidence. And inspiration is a huge, huge tool. Uh, social anxiety sometimes and I'm not sure why and I try to battle and I try to fight it and sometimes I overcome it pretty well but I'll tell you the times that I do overcome it is when I believe in myself when it when it chips around the table it's it's very hard to explain but I I see that in Connor I see that part of me in him and watching that inspires me to even push myself harder because he found a way to capitalize on it. He found a way to take that positive energy and make it something better. Just the way he talks and the way he presents himself and the way he holds himself. Like, I helped build this. You're not gonna tell me my worth. You're not gonna take that away from me. It type, one of those type things. Like, I know my, my worth. And that's a very strong message you got to know your worth, what your what your values are, and you can't let someone tramp on them. And uh, that may come across cocky, but when the chips are on the table and and you're you're aiming for the sky, you got to believe in yourself, and you can't let someone else drag you down. And I find that inspirational, and the way he comes across to many seems arrogant. But um, looking at it from my perspective and um, my challenges, I find it that he's coming across as someone that believes in himself very deeply. He's not going into this fight thinking that he just has a chance. He's going into this fight thinking he hasn't won. And um, I wish him the best. And there's a lot of people that need an inspiration, an uh, inspiring person in their life, whether it be um, someone nearby or just someone someone that they could admire from a distance I try to be a leader and I, I push myself very hard as you guys see and on days I question myself and if I'm doing the right thing and if I'm going to say the right thing and, and what is someone going to say if I say the wrong thing or what are they going to think about me but I tell you what in the last past year I'm not sure if you guys have noticed a change in me but I stopped being that person I got to change that person by inspiration, by watching other people and looking up to other people and learning from, from that. One of, the, one of the crazy things I learned, I know this didn't turn into this session, but you guys see me do this time belt job. And in all reality, do you really need to watch me put it back together if you take, took it apart? Or would you like to just spend some time with me? And hopefully it's the second half and, and you enjoy spending a little bit of time. So I wanted to tell you guys about myself and some of the things I deal with on a daily basis. And I found value in people that valued me. The positive comments. The hope of maybe one day taking off. But I got off track a little bit. And the reason I got off track was just to tell you that I am stronger today because of people like that in my life and people like that in the, in the um, community as we know it, whether it be acting or not, it's um, inspirational. I can tell you this, when I was in Chicago a few months back, a couple of those times I was there, I was by myself. And being by myself meant that I had to face some pretty, pretty high people on my own when it came time to uh, give a, a detailed report 
or feedback on a on a pretty extensive job that we were we were doing that could could potentially have had a huge impact in in either direction depending on which way it went so they were putting a lot of faith in me I, uh, I knew my job and I knew my job very well so when I was on the floor and when I got to the piece of equipment I noticed it was very similar to the same one I I have worked on for many years our first intentions were to go there and just evaluate the machines but the first thing I noticed when I was there was a huge issue if I invested like four hours of my time could bring them almost back up to speed that <laughs> required me to try to get some downtime from people that didn't really know me which everybody said there's no way I was going to be able to get it we all went out to eat along with the what would be my boss out there and we were sitting down there and eating and and some of the other guys, I started saying, yeah, Will does his own thing on the side. He's a very good mechanic and he does work for all of the other mechanics in the industrial field that we're in and their families. And they, they found that pretty intriguing. So there I was put on the spot and they asked me, they said, tell me about yourself, Will. And I did. I told them pretty much what you guys see every day. And the next day I had that eight hours. The next day turned into a pretty late night and we got it done. We were scheduled to fly out the next morning and we did. So I wasn't able to evaluate the machine after startup, but I was later told it was the best that it's ran in over two years. And that was a good feeling. Well, the moral of this story is how I could relate in a different situation. And if you ever have those days where other people doubt you, or they say it can't be done, or even if you doubt yourself, at times we could be our own worst enemy. Believe in yourself, guys. If you feel it can be done, push forward. It's the only way you'll ever know. Now that we had the bolts tight on the, the pulleys, on the water pump, we can take and put the power steering belt on. Torque the spec. That feels good. Leave it right there. All right, get the bottom one tight as well. Here we got the AC compressor belt up and around. Okay. Alternator belt, but as you see, it goes around the water pump as well. There. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to move it down there. Same scenario, we're gonna tighten that down. I don't know if you've seen the the twist trick I use on a belt. So it's a, a wiggle plus a twist. You should be able to, there should be enough in there just to give it a little twist, but you definitely don't want it too loose, but you don't want it too tight. See how I can spin it over a quarter? I would go a little tighter than that. Now do you have belt deflection tools? You should really be using it. has a nice springy feeling. I'm going to tighten it up right there. When we raise it up, we'll get the bottom bolt. But for now, we'll uh, finish what we're doing up top here. And that will consist of us reinstalling the, the motor mount. Motor mount back down in place. Say for Uga Uggas. She's tight. We got this metal bracket. You can't forget about that. I don't think I really want to tighten that one down until I get this upper mount in place, you know? I don't know if I get it on with that pastor belt. In place. Okay, finally got it in there. Just loosen that power steering belt up just a tidge more and uh, 
I was able to get it right underneath there. Harness retainer back in place. Make everything happy. Okay. Okay, so I got another one's over here. We still have one more bolt left on the bottom alternator. Alternator belt's tight. AC belt's tight. Harmonic balancer is tight and torque to spec. Um, everything's tight here with the tensioner. Yeah, we just have that one more back bolt on the alternator. Okay, bottom alternator bolt is tight. Next, we just have this guard. I'll go up here like so, and I'm just gonna zip these retaining bolts in. How much faith do you have? <laughs> 100%. Hey, moment of truth. First start. Fingers crossed. Oh, keys on the toolbox. Hey guys, she's all set. Sounds pretty good. We're gonna go take it for a ride. Make sure everything's good. I want to put a sticker on that timing cover. It should have came with the belt. Same old routine, fiddling guitar. Where do we take it from here? <laughs> All right, guys. Like always, I hope you enjoyed. I won't keep you hanging out too late here. But I'll try to get this video edited and up. I know it's pretty much a repetitive video of the Hyundai that we did. Very similar, same engine. But this was in a Kia.